she was sent away from court to live in the countryside, far from the intrigues and dangers of her father's court. Elizabeth's life was not easy. She was only three years old, and she had lost her mother and her status as a princess. Although she was still the daughter of the king, she was considered illegitimate because Henry's marriage to Anne Boleyn was declared invalid. This meant that Elizabeth had no claim to the throne, and she was treated with little respect by many people at court. Elizabeth grew up with a strong sense of who she was. She never forgot that she was the daughter of a queen, and she believed that she was destined for something important. She knew that her future depended on the decisions made by the people in power, and she was determined to survive, no matter what. As Elizabeth grew up, her father, Henry VIII, grew older and sicker. Henry had once been a strong and handsome king, but by the time he was in his fifties, his health had deteriorated badly. He was overweight, had painful leg ulcers, and was often in a bad mood. The once vibrant and powerful king was now a shadow of his former self. Henry's health problems made him more unpredictable and difficult to deal with. He became increasingly paranoid and suspicious of the people around him. His relationships with his wives and children were often strained, and his court was a place of fear and intrigue. People were careful not to anger the king, knowing that his temper could lead to harsh punishments. In his later years, Henry became obsessed with securing the future of the Tudor dynasty. He had finally gotten the son he wanted, Edward, with his third wife, Jane Seymour, who had died shortly after giving birth. But Henry knew that his son was still a child and that the kingdom would be vulnerable if Edward became king while he was too young. To ensure the stability of the kingdom, Henry continued to marry. He had a total of six wives, but none of his later marriages produced any more children. Henry's focus remained on ensuring that Edward would be a strong and capable king when the time came. Henry issued the Third Succession Act, which stated that if Edward died without heirs, the throne would pass to Mary, and if Mary had no heirs, it would go to Elizabeth. By 1546, Henry's health was failing rapidly. He was bedridden, in constant pain, and his mood was more volatile than ever. Despite his declining health, he continued to rule with an iron fist, making sure that his kingdom would be secure after his death. He made plans for Edward to be cared for by a council of advisors who would help him govern until he was old enough to rule on his own. On January 28, 1547, Henry VIII died at the age of 55. His death marked the end of an era in English history. Henry had been king for nearly 38 years, and his reign had seen the break from the Catholic Church, the establishment of the Church of England, and the execution of two of his wives, including Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn. Henry's death left the kingdom in a precarious position. Edward, at just nine years old, was now the king. Elizabeth's future was once again uncertain. With Henry VIII gone, the court became a place of even greater intrigue and danger, especially for someone like Elizabeth, who had always been seen as a potential threat to those in power. Edward VI, Elizabeth's younger brother, ascended to the throne in 1547 at the tender age of nine. As a child king, he was unable to rule on his own, so a council of regents, led by his uncle, Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset, governed the kingdom on his behalf. This period was marked by political and religious upheaval, as the council pushed forward with Protestant reforms, continuing the work started by Henry VIII. Elizabeth, now in her early teens, returned to court during Edward's reign, but she remained cautious. She understood that her position was precarious. She was neither entirely safe nor fully trusted. Although she was no longer considered illegitimate, she had to navigate the treacherous waters of court politics carefully. During Edward's reign, England saw the continuation of the Protestant Reformation. The country moved further away from Catholicism and new religious practices were introduced. Elizabeth, who had been raised as a Protestant, adapted to these changes, but she was careful not to make any public statements that could be seen as too radical or controversial. She knew that any misstep could be used against her. Elizabeth's relationship with her brother was cordial, but not particularly close. Edward was focused on his role as king and the responsibilities that came with it, even at such a young age. He relied heavily on his advisors and was often influenced by those around him. 
Elizabeth, on the other hand, continued her education, learning more about the politics of the time and the art of statecraft. However, Edward's reign was short-lived. By 1553, it became clear that the young king was seriously ill. He suffered from tuberculosis, and his health rapidly deteriorated. As Edward lay dying, the question of succession became urgent. Although the Third Succession Act had named Mary as the next in line, Edward and his advisors were determined to prevent a Catholic from ascending to the throne. Under the influence of the Duke of Northumberland, one of his most powerful advisors, Edward was persuaded to alter the line of succession. In a document known as the Devise for the Succession, Edward named his Protestant cousin, Lady Jane Grey, as his heir, bypassing both Mary and Elizabeth. This decision was controversial and set the stage for a crisis. Edward VI died on July 6, 1553, at the age of 15. His death plunged the kingdom into chaos. Lady Jane Grey was proclaimed queen, but her reign lasted only nine days before Mary, with widespread support, successfully claimed the throne. Elizabeth, who had wisely remained in the background during this tumultuous time, now found herself once again in a precarious position. Mary I, Elizabeth's older half-sister, ascended to the throne in 1553. As the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, Mary was a devout Catholic, and she was determined to restore Catholicism in England. Her reign would become infamous for the persecution of Protestants, earning her the nickname Bloody Mary. Elizabeth's position was immediately threatened by Mary's accession. As a Protestant, Elizabeth was viewed with suspicion by her sister and her advisors. Mary knew that Elizabeth had a legitimate claim to the throne, and she feared that Protestant factions might rally around Elizabeth to depose her. Despite these fears, Mary initially treated Elizabeth with a degree of kindness, hoping to keep her close and under control. However, as Mary's reign progressed, tensions between the two sisters grew. Mary's marriage to Philip II of Spain, a staunch Catholic, only deepened the divide. Many in England were unhappy with the Queen's decision to marry a foreign prince, and rumors began to circulate that Elizabeth was involved in plots against Mary. In 1554, these suspicions came to a head with the Wyatt's Rebellion, an uprising led by Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger. The rebellion was largely motivated by opposition to Mary's marriage to Philip, but it also aimed to place Elizabeth on the throne. Although there was no concrete evidence linking Elizabeth to the rebellion, Mary's advisors convinced her that Elizabeth was a threat. Elizabeth was arrested and taken to the Tower of London, the same place where her mother, Anne Bolin, had been imprisoned before her execution. Elizabeth was terrified, knowing that she could easily meet the same fate. However, she maintained her innocence and denied any involvement in the rebellion. Elizabeth's imprisonment was a time of great fear and uncertainty. She was kept under close watch and her every move was scrutinized. But despite the pressure, Elizabeth remained calm and composed. She knew that her survival depended on her ability to convince Mary of her loyalty, and she played her part well. After several months in the tower, Elizabeth was released, but she remained under house arrest at Woodstock, a royal estate in Oxfordshire. Although she was no longer in immediate danger, Elizabeth knew that her life was still at risk. Mary's reign was increasingly unpopular, and Elizabeth's supporters were growing in number. Elizabeth understood that she had to bide her time and wait for the right moment to make her move. Mary's reign continued to be troubled by religious and political conflicts. Her attempts to restore Catholicism were met with resistance, and her marriage to Philip was deeply unpopular. The Queen's health also began to deteriorate, and by 1558, it was clear that she was dying. Mary had no children, and the question of succession once again became urgent. As Mary lay dying, she finally acknowledged that Elizabeth would be her successor. On November 17, 1558, Mary first died, and Elizabeth was proclaimed queen. Elizabeth's long and dangerous journey to the throne was finally over, and she would go on to become one of the greatest monarchs in English history. Elizabeth I ascended to the throne on November 17, 1558, at the age of 25. Her journey to the throne had been fraught with danger, but she had survived and was now the queen of England. Elizabeth's early experiences had shaped her into a shrewd and cautious ruler, 
and she was determined to bring stability to a kingdom that had been torn apart by religious and political strife. Elizabeth's first challenge as queen was to unite her divided kingdom. England was deeply split between Catholics and Protestants, and Elizabeth knew that she had to find a way to reconcile these differences if her reign was to be successful. Although she was a Protestant, Elizabeth was careful not to alienate her Catholic subjects. She adopted a policy of religious tolerance, known as the Elizabethan Religious Settlement, which established the Church of England as a middle way between Catholicism and Protestantism. The Elizabethan Religious Settlement was a masterstroke of political compromise. It allowed for a degree of religious flexibility, which helped to ease tensions in the kingdom. While it did not satisfy the more extreme elements on either side, it brought a measure of peace and stability that had been sorely lacking during the reigns of Henry VIII, Edward VI, and Mary I. Elizabeth also worked to strengthen the economy and improve the administration of the government. She surrounded herself with capable advisors, including William Cecil, who became her most trusted counselor. Elizabeth's intelligence and pragmatism quickly became apparent, and she earned the respect and loyalty of her subjects. However, Elizabeth's reign was not without challenges. One of the most pressing issues was the question of marriage and succession. As a young and unmarried queen, Elizabeth was expected to marry and produce an heir to secure the future of the Tudor dynasty. But Elizabeth was wary of marriage, knowing that it could complicate her position as a ruler. She was determined to maintain her independence and refused to be pressured into a marriage that did not suit her. Throughout her reign, Elizabeth skillfully navigated the various marriage proposals that came her way, using them to her advantage in diplomacy while never committing to any one suitor. This earned her the nickname the Virgin Queen, and she became a symbol of strength and purity for her people. Elizabeth's reign also saw the rise of England as a major naval power. She supported exploration and the expansion of trade, which led to the establishment of English colonies in the New World. The defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588 was one of the greatest military victories of her reign, and solidified England's position as a dominant force in Europe. Elizabeth's long reign, which lasted for 45 years, became known as the Elizabethan era, a golden age of English culture, exploration, and prosperity. The arts flourished under her patronage, with figures like William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe creating some of the most enduring works of English literature. But despite her many successes, Elizabeth's reign was not without its darker moments. She faced numerous threats to her life and her throne, including plots by Catholic conspirators and foreign powers. The execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, in 1587 was one of the most controversial decisions of her reign, but Elizabeth believed it was necessary to protect her kingdom from the threat of invasion. As Elizabeth grew older, the question of succession once again became a pressing issue. She never married and had no children, which meant that the Tudor line would end with her. In the final years of her reign, Elizabeth faced increasing pressure to name a successor, but she remained evasive on the issue. Elizabeth III died on March 24, 1603, at the age of 69. Her death marked the end of the Tudor dynasty, but her legacy lived on. Elizabeth had brought stability and prosperity to England, and her reign is remembered as one of the most glorious in the nation's history. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please subscribe to my channel for more captivating stories. See you in my next video. Bye.